All right, you guys, I'm redoing my video because the audio is so crummy. Um, I had some mixed mic problems going on here. And this is just for you uh, Facebook and YouTube guys. Okay, so uh, here we go. We're going to talk about this prophetic word in 2019 that I received start of December. Like that? Isn't that interesting? <laughs> hum feet is called. Uh, okay, um, here we are. Uh, let me just turn off my title for you, and we'll get down to it here because uh, now I, I wanted to redo this because uh, what happened was I had the camera mic on at the same time as the studio stuff, so it it all blurred up and and made that terrible sound. Um, the program for tomorrow recorded fine, but what went on to the Facebook channel uh, sounded awful. So I'll delete, once I get this one posted, I'll delete the other one and make sure you share over to it if you're doing. Now, this prophetic word that I'm bringing to you is a couple things. One is uh, it's directed towards Christians in Canada. It's about what God's doing in Canada. And it's um, something I, I, I've received. It. I, if you've already watched the posting I did earlier, like last week I did one live on my private page, Materi Somerville's page, and then shared it over to the other pages. It's gone, it, well, I guess it's not viral for Facebook, but it's viral for me. Like over 2,000 shares now, or, or views, including the YouTube channel. And um, it's it's uh, going around and going all over the place. And, and it is something that's really critical, important, for you guys, uh, this word, uh, it surprised me, came just out of the blue to me, Lord speaking to me. And uh, although I, I've got to explain something, uh, most of the time when I receive something prophetically from the Lord, it, it's a whole lot of ways at once. It's not like a, just clear words and that's all. Uh, I will get some words, but often I will get a the Holy Spirit giving me that gift of the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. It's it's the the whole uh, immediate comprehension and understanding, like which I've got to put into words as well. And very often I will see pictures. In fact, when I'm ministering mostly to people and mostly at churches and sort of thing, um, I receive the prophecies via. Uh, something that I see in the spirit. And then I ask the Lord for wisdom and he gives me understanding. And so um, the same things will come like, you know, impartations of gifts. If I see a spirit of a prophetic word by the Holy Spirit coming to somebody, I will see a particular thing of the spirit coming on the person and the way it comes. Now I know what it is now. But when it first started happening, I'd say, God, what are you showing me? And he began to explain it. So that's the way these things work for me prophetically. It's been like this for a long time. And uh, this word, um, really interesting, it came to me uh, while I was driving along in my truck. And uh, very clear, it's got three particular points about it, which I can enhance a little bit for you here as I go along, because there's a whole lot. I mean, I could get into discussions and conversations over them, and I have. Um, as I understand how they apply, but I, I'm just going to bring them out once again. And uh, there was the, you know, the gathering for Canada took place out in, in uh, Manitoba, uh, what they call it, a battle for Canada. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I thought about it, I had a lot of people talk to me about it, people there who were presenters who I know personally, a lot of uh, American, you know, people came up, prophetic people, Cindy Jacobs, that sort of thing. And, um, that is part of the whole context of this. The context of this prophecy is so many people have been seeking God for our nation and repenting of their own sin and repenting of the nation's sins, uh, like Second Chronicles 7.14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. And that's what we want, the healing of the land. But one of the things you might never have paid attention to, and you should go to Second Chronicles 7 and read verse uh, 
the verses ahead of it, you'll see that what happens is God begins to let these or send the various troublings on the land that were described in the blessings and cursings of Israel. When they've turned away from the Lord, certain kinds of troubling will come on the land. And then he says, if my people will call by my name, will humble themselves, seek my face and repent and turn from their wicked ways, he'll hear, you know, and all of that was revealed to Solomon and, and uh, it's applicable to us too. So we have prayed and the battle for Canada, they're praying. There's been gatherings across the nation, people praying. We've done some here at the radio station, praying for our nation and actually asking the Lord to be, have mercy and grace for our nation. And, and that's the, you know, part of the context. The other thing I should say before I give you the word again here is um, 2018 has been a year of transition for a lot of you. There has been a shift in, in your placement, your ministry, or, or convergence, so to speak, of what your, your alignment is and your destiny is, and maybe converging of uh, your situation along with your gifting and all that. Uh, you've been, many of you put into a new kind of a place, and, and that happened with me in the past year, because in the summer of, uh, in the fall of 20. 17, the Lord spoke to me and said, I wouldn't be traveling overseas much anymore, hardly at all. And it's just not happened. It's all of a sudden stopped. And he also said, um, I was to lay down the business I had, which I did on the side to try to make ends meet, you know, uh, uh, where I would be building repair and all that kind of stuff. I, I was to lay that down. So I did by faith. And then I've had to pray and Lord, you said to stop doing that, supply my needs. And, and I'd pray and seek God. And, and then the supply would come somehow. There's been a shifting. And one of the things the Lord said to me is you're shifting into being the prophet, uh, uh, like a, a prophetic voice into the nation of Canada. Well, I've been overseas ministering for well, more than 10 years, mainly. And, and I'd go and travel and, and hardly had my connections anymore for Canada. Now they're opening up again. Praise God. So I, I want these words to get out there. And, and the Lord began to give me specific things. And this was one of them. Um, prophetic word for Canada, and the Lord has speak, spoken about what we're doing here at Spirit FM, our, our place here in Campbellton, this studio here, and this this little building here, I look, you can look out and see some of our, our uh, office here, and where we're located, uh, I, I guess you can't see that, um, in our little studio that, uh, oh, I have my title still on here, um, that, uh, we're we're functioning and praying and interceding as an anchor for Western Canada. Keep Western Canada off the rocks, like like literally. And let me say this to you: it's not about the big numbers. It's not about the big gatherings. It's not about the big names, because the way this works with the kingdom of God is wherever two or three gather in my name, there I am in the midst of you. If you're a holy person, you're walking with God you're hearing from the Lord, and you know you, the Lord set you in the place where you're supposed to be, then you begin to claim the sphere of influence you have, whether it's a business or school or, a, or, or, or you start with a home for sure or your city or whatever. I do that with my city, my city council. I'm there as doing television all the time uh, and over the whole city. You begin to claim it in the name of Jesus. Two or three of you use your authority because that's constitutionally in the kingdom of God the representative authority and power in turning heavenly things in your city, you use that. And, and uh, you can, if you're walking with the Lord, not compromised, you see, just like a soldier, just like a green beret going in there, um, you can say to the, to the demons, Jesus gave us authority over demons, get your hands off in the name of Jesus. Now, and the Lord will shift things in the heavenlies and the powers and principalities as you're walking with them. He, he will do the shifts. And this is about, a shift in the heavenlies taking place starting January 1st, 2019. And, and I think about some of, you know, some of the weird prophecies you see in Ezekiel and in Zechariah, how God judgment began to work. And for example, uh, in Zechariah, he talks about a, a, a spirit would enter into the house of a thief and destroy and, and demolish what he has in his house. There's, there's a spiritual release happening January 1st, 2019. That's why the Lord told me to get this out before January 1st, before Christmas, in fact, the first go. 
So uh, there you go. So let me give you the details of this once again so that you uh, can understand what this is all about, okay? And uh, I put it on some notes. I'd send it out in my email too. Uh, but uh, here it is, a prophetic word. The first thing, uh, I got three distinct things, and I can flesh them out with some words here. The Lord has seen your confession of sin and prayer. And, and, I, and even when I got that word, I was thinking about that uh, gathering the battle for Canada, but I'm thinking about so many of the other ones I just mentioned. And, uh, but here's what God says about it. You Christians in Canada, I have seen your confession of sin and prayer and heard your prayers, he says, and that'll be part two. But I'm watching if you will bear the fruit of repentance. In other words, you can't make these promises to God without meaning it, and, and uh, you can't confess a sin unless you're leaving it off. He's watching for that. And you cannot be careless. It matters how you live. Everything you do matters. Now, let me get into this a little bit because the uh, confession of sin. You know, there's, there's all these stories in the Old Testament. For example, uh, uh, one of the stories was how, how um, the Israelites had, uh, you know, ens enslaved their fellow Israelites for debts. And then the law of God said they were to be set free after seven years, you know, and they weren't doing it. They would enslave them, keep them slave and everything else. And then God was going to bring judgment. I think this was in Jeremiah, but I'm not sure. And, um, you know, the enemy's at the gate. And they all repented and they said, oh, yes, okay, now we'll repent. We'll stop. We'll stop. And they, they set the people free. And then a little bit later, they enslaved them again. So the judgment came and then came against them. And this is what the Lord's getting at. You know, it's one thing in the heat of the moment under conviction of sin, under the moving of the Holy Spirit, to confess your sin. I've seen this so much in ministry team time, ministry lines at church. People come up, they get under the conviction and the working of the Holy Spirit and the conviction of sin, and they're wailing, and they'll cry, and they'll say, they're confessing, well, God hears your prayer. He hears what you're confessing. He will forgive your sin. You've confessed your sin. He'll forgive your sin. But then he watches to see how you're going to live. And so many times people went back to their sin. And the Bible calls it like, you know, dog going back to its vomit. Okay? So just because you confessed your sin, yes, he'll forgive your sin. But now we've got to keep walking now in holiness. I've been preaching holiness for a number of years. This is the time for holiness. You walk now. It matters how you live. Everything you do matters. January 1st, he's going to hold it accountable in a way that is more severe than it's been, because there's been a lot of grace about this, okay? So that's the first point that I'm wanting to make, and, and that's what the Lord is saying to me. Let's get over into the second one here um, and, and get down here. Here, he says, I heard your prayers for Canada. He's heard us. Praise God. I've heard your prayers for Canada. And uh, let me just get that down here. I will begin to judge between um, the strong, uh, the, I will begin to judge the strongholds of this nation. We're talking here about um, the spiritual strongholds, the stronghold, the strong man, the strong demon powers, the strong, well, particularly powers and principalities that are in back of the vile things that are going on in our country. God's going to start dealing it with it. And you know how God deals with stuff. He, he begins in the, the spiritual, and it works out in the natural. Even miracles are like that. You know, that's why faith is involved, and then miracles happen. But he, he says this here, um, I will begin to judge the strongholds in the nation. I, the Lord, make a distinction between what is vile and what is holy. Boy, our culture sure doesn't. But the Lord says to you, Christian believers, I will judge the vile and bless the holy. This is coming down 2019. It starts. The Lord always made a distinction between the vile and the holy, but it's coming down. What are you watching on TV? Stop it. Turn from it. Don't go back. Keep yourself clean, your words clean, what you see and clean, your way you walk. It's not legalism. This is purity and holiness of heart and mind and life. 
you know, we're, we're going to be exposed to things that are unholy. That's going to happen all the time. It's so we're just out there in the world. We're to be in the world, but not of the world. Remember Jesus washed the disciples' feet? And when he got to Peter, Peter said, oh, wash me all over. And, 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 and the Lord said to Peter, uh, no, you're already clean by my word. Well, then, you know, I just need to wash your feet. Why? Because the feet are where you get dirty. So we're out in the world. The, the Lord deals with that stuff, but don't you dare get him mixed up, engaged in anything vile anymore. So many Christians connecting in with perverted stuff. Oh, dear Lord, have mercy. I'd felt the compassion of God about this. And he's saying, now, you know, I've heard you. I'm going to begin to judge these things. And you don't want to be caught in how this works. I asked the Lord how this is working. How does this work? How is this judgment? Is something boom going to happen in January 1st, 2019? Well, um, I'd had a word from the Lord earlier in the fall, and I put it up, and it went all over the place too, was something big's about to happen. I didn't know if it was going to happen in the fall or the winter or what, but it's like God just says something big's going to happen. Something big is something that's going to shake everything. But Lord says this is the opportunity for the church. I remember giving that to the pastors here. Whatever big is going to happen is the opportunity for the church. Okay, uh, so people will be hungry and seeking. Um, but it could be something big that is so shaking to the natural point of view. It looks terrible. It could be financial collapse. It could be your infrastructure collapse. It could be, uh, you know, it could get really a big mess. Who knows what can happen? Something terrible can happen. But listen, believers, if you're walking with God, it's not only an opportunity for the gospel, the Holy Spirit will keep you. In course, God has been saying this to me for me for years. I've been trying my very best to walk with him that there's coming a day where we have to learn to walk with God, trusting him for our provision. So that may happen. But for this word, as I've been asking the Lord about it, I, I got different illustrations. The first time I asked him about it there last week, two weeks ago, uh, the illustration came to my mind was the story of Jeremiah, where the Lord said, put a, a waistband on, and he did. And then the Lord told him, take it off put it in the cleft of a rock out in the wilderness, and he did. And when he came back later, it was all rotted away, useless. And he was saying that this judgment will begin to work so things disintegrate, that, that wherever this judgment of God is touching in these vile strongholds, and of course they may be the illicit political things that are going on, not just financial. It could be corruption at all levels of government. There's certainly corruption in various things. There's corruption even in, in the media, in the, uh, you know, scientific. There, there's, all, there's just so much going on. It's crazy. Uh, but what I got from this is the way it'll happen probably is this disintegration will start happening. And uh, don't be disintegrated with it. And then I asked the Lord this week, again about this, what's it going to look like? And immediately, and matter of fact, it was this morning in my devotions, and, and immediately the Lord pointed me towards the story of the cursing of the fig tree, where they came out of Jerusalem and Jesus went over to this fig tree that was in leaf, hoping to get some figs, and there was nothing on it. And he said, he said, may you never bear fruit again. And nothing seemed to happen right then. But when they came back a day later and walked by the fig tree, Peter Jesus says, look, Lord, the fig tree you cursed is withered away right from the root. And that, that is how the Lord has been telling me this particular dealing of God may do working in 2019. So, yeah, um, it, it's all coming down the pipe, you guys. Now, uh, we'll get on to the third part here. Um, let me just move this down. Here we go. Uh, and this is part three of the prophecy came to me. The Lord said, it matters how you vote in the 2019 general election here in Canada. This is for Canadian Christians. Here it is. If you vote for a political party that promotes abortion and sexual perversion, and we have a couple of them, then you have aligned yourself with Baal and Asherah. Now, it doesn't mean these parties are knowingly following Baal and Asherah. It's not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is that there's a spirit, the demon powers, stronghold the principalities in the land of Baal and Asherah, the same powers, principalities that were behind Baal and Asherah in Israel, 
are driving these things. And uh, you, you think about it for a minute. You go, what on earth is behind this drive for more abortion? Like Canada, $500 million for more abortion in the nations? Like what? Why? Well, you got to understand this is, this is a spiritual battle that's going on here. This is not politics. This is not even psychological. You see? And it's not even women's health. It's health or anything. It's, it's, those are excuses thrown out there. No, this is spiritual, man. I'll tell you what. And, uh, and so the Lord holds you accountable for how you vote. But now here's the rest of it. Um, if you vote for a political party promotes abortion and sexual perversion, you have aligned yourself with Baal and Asherah. You will be judged with Baal and Asherah. Asherah. God's starting to deal with this stuff. This is what's happening in 2019. And what's that look like? I don't know. I just keep getting that the fig tree thing and all of that. But you got to know this that actually what's going on in the world right now is, is particularly the elite high and mighty of government and of business and multinational corporations, all kinds of things like that. Famous people, probably not so famous people. The worship of Baal and Asherah is back. It is happening now. In fact, there's accounts of how they will go to these gatherings in different places and uh, they worship to obtain a spiritual, a demonic power. They don't know that, but spiritual anointing power and wisdom from these gods, these spirits. But it is Baal. It is Asherah. They're saying it. They're doing it. They're worshiping him. And that's what's driving stuff. And, and uh, I'm not going to get into that because you can just go find the internet. It's there. It's, it's out there. The, the reports, the stories. People that have penetrated the meetings have given the reports, got the videos, you know, it's all there. Um, and what's happening? They're setting up their symbols to establish capital cities under the umbrella of Baal. And for example, uh, here's a, here is an uh, arch way. There was one like it destroyed in Syria by ISIS. And this was replicated. And this archway to the temple of Baal has been replicated in major cities around the world. And guess what? When this stuff happens, it, it is to establish uh, the stronghold and the position of that stronghold in the cities. But you know what? I, I've got good news for you. As God starts to move in this judgment, listen, you, you get yourself walking on the right side of the Lord in this matter, and you have authority. Not, not to come flying up against powers and principalities. Don't do that. God's dealing with it. But here it is, wherever two or three gather in my name, doesn't take a big bunch, wherever two or three gather in my name, I'm in the midst. God is, we're working. You have authority over all demons, the Bible said. Now, demon, let me get into this bit for you a little bit here. Uh, 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 a demon's not the same as a power and principality. Maybe you've wondered about that, but let me explain a little bit. Um, you get out of some of the places in the Bible, uh, Enoch is thoroughly describes this, but Enoch's quoted all over the Bible. Um, the, the, uh, the spirits of the children of the fallen angels and women described in the book of Genesis and in Enoch, um, when they were killed before the flood, they were killed. Uh, they're not human and they were wicked and evil, like crazy as these demigods and crazy, you know, that's where all these myths come from and these stories and cultures and everything. They were in, anyway, according to Enoch, they were just trapped around the earth, and they, these are the demons. And uh, they're not the same as the fallen angels. The angels that fell and did this with women were all thrown in the bottomless pit. That's the ones there. And, um, but the others are still operating. You have authority, Jesus said, against all demons. These are the, 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 the demonic spiritual powers, uh, personalities without bodies that seek to influence and inhabit people for every kind of wickedness and oppression, depression, discouragement, sickness, disease, suffering, you name it. Just look in the Bible. I don't have to get into that. Uh, two or three, you, you, you've got to deal with this. 
So you've got in your city or your business or your, your school or your university or your whatever family, could be any place you are, wherever God's given you an assignment. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask him for his love to work through you. And I'll do more videos on this stuff later. But when you pray, you have authority and you just bind up those demons and tell them to go in Jesus' name. The people may do stuff still. People are going to do all kinds of stuff. And we can't, uh, you know, war against people. No, we're not supposed to. We're supposed to pray for them. But the demonic power anointing, I've proven this uh, hundreds of times. The demonic power that comes to anoint the workers of evil, you can bind it in Jesus' name. So, no, you don't. You're not working through them. They might go about their stuff and do their stuff and talk and carry on and everything else. Man, I, I've gone, you know, around witchcraft fairs and different things that have taken place. And, and I just walk it and say, this is my city, you devil. Every demon here, you're not coming. You're not going to come and anoint this thing in Jesus' name. And they set it up. They carry on. They can't get in touch with their spirits. They can't do their psychic stuff. They can't do any of the stuff. It's a total flop. And exactly what we expect. This is how you deal with it. God is about to upset the apple cart, shake down, bring down all these demonic and high spiritual powers that are driving this stuff. The judgment is starting to come on them. So they're going to get shaken and rattled and dissolve and disintegrate. And this is what's coming in in 2019. And he's just warning the church, don't you be coupled with any of it. This is your opportunity. It's going to be a shaking going on. But at the same time, life of God, the authority of the Lord, bringing in the kingdom of God. You start to pray for the Lord to come in. Ask him to give you wisdom. Ask him for opportunities to minister. Ask him to open your doors. Uh, give you wisdom. You're taking their cities for God in the name of Jesus. And so you don't, you know, it's it's not a matter. You're not trying to get authority and, and high and mighty and deal with all the junk that goes on. No, no, that's not what you're, you know, the Lord's dealing with uh, powers and principalities. But those demons' powers that work right there, at that local level, he, he, you just tell it. That's your responsibility, guys. Get them out of your home, your family. Don't touch them. Don't get anything to do with them. And and start carrying it from there. And so here we go. This is the amazing power of the Lord that's at work and is coming down the pipe for 2019. I'm going to try to uh, teach out some more of this another time because really there are four steps about taking the territory that God's given you for the Lord that I can bring you. Okay. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.